Hello everyone, welcome to Trend Talks. Today I have the pleasure to talk with Christian Snell. He is based in Warsaw in Poland. Christian is a legal counsel at the Regional Chamber of Legal Advisors in Warsaw and a German advocate at Landesgericht Düsseldorf, which is in Germany. Uh, being a renewable energy expert for, with more than 15 years of uh, experience in renewable energy, he has been advising on renewable energy projects, structuring and establishing investment funds, and advising on their investment activities and strategy. Welcome, Christian. Thank you, Edward. Christian, first question to you. Um, with the things happening, it, it's kind of a yeah, booming situation in the Polish market. What is your outlook on what's going to happen with PV in the market in the second half of this year and next year? This depends very much on the future of the uh, auction support scheme. You know that there will be an auction organized on the 8th of June this year for, let's say, almost three terawatt hours per year of production due to the fact that the onshore wind projects, which face actually since 2016 a distance rule, which generally stopped onshore wind farm development, so the pipeline has dried out. The whole basket will be taken over by, by or almost the whole basket will be taken over by uh, utility scale PV. So therefore, I think um, we have really a good market environment for PVs being awarded at the auction in a, in a quite um, uh, huge scale. How this will then continue, because we know that the support system is only notified until until this year, and it should then, according to the plans of the Polish government, continue until 2027, but no no detailed information is available yet. We will see in the future. But this means good outlook for PV, for utility scale. It's not going to compete with the offshore uh, wind uh, projects? Well, the, the auction is for onshore and, and PV, a joint auction for onshore wind and PV, like in many other countries, it's, it's generally following the EU uh, regulation. Whereas offshore, of course, is a completely different animal. There's a specific offshore wind act for those auctions um, when it comes to, to offshore. So offshore is not competing against PV in the same auction basket. Okay. It's a different question. We recently witnessed the uh, first solar PPAs being signed in the, in Poland. Uh, what do you expect? Is there a, will we going to see a, a rise, an exponential rise, maybe even uh, for these kind of contracts? Yeah, well, let's say about that. Of course, the contract for difference, which is awarded at the auction scheme, is a little bit more favorable generally because generally get the floor you want to have you get it from the Polish state on the other hand corporate PPAs so far have uh, in Poland usually seen a 10-year term but right now first 15-year corporate PPAs have been concluded and of course the very high wholesale prices which are currently at a level of something between 55 and 60 euro cents per kilowatt hour this is extremely high and we expect that let's say the very high wholesale prices which are very much dependent on the Polish energy mix because it's still some 70 85-80% of the energy is generated by coal. This, of course, will have a major impact on the corporate PPA market. You say that the amount of coal is going to increase in current circumstances in Poland? No, no. Well, let's say the coal generation as such is there. There's, there's really no alternative because you have not too many renewable energy generators, you don't have any nuclear, you have little amount of gas. So as long as you don't replace the market with, with new generators, you still are dependent on, on coal generation. And, and generally the coal generation is in the Polish energy mix something between 75 and 80%. And if you then know that the, the let's say, average emission of the Polish market is something slowly below 800 gram of CO2 per kilowatt hour, and you know where are right now the prices for European allowances, you can imagine what is the impact on, on, the, on the Polish uh, wholesale market price. The Polish wholesale market price is generally already now almost at a level of, of doubling the neighboring wholesale markets. Yeah, that means in, in Germany or in Czech Republic, Slovak Republic or in the Baltics, you get the energy by almost 50% cheaper than in Poland. So what are you seeing in your experience are the biggest thresholds for, uh, for the Polish PV market development? Well, at the end of the day, I think you will see the same story as we have observed with, with onshore wind. At some moment, the, the grids will be full. And, and you see it in all uh, markets, but especially in countries in Europe, that at some moment, you have to think about what to do with the grids. And, and, and generally, you have to spend a lot of money on digitalization, on, on smart grids and, and those type of things. Of course, the money is already there. Uh, it arrived and it's already spent. But 
there has to be done more. And on the other hand, the transmission uh, grids have as well to be have to be adopted. And this is a little bit a limiting factor. And we see it already that more and more um, applications for obtaining technical grid connection conditions are generally uh, cancelled. So, so this this is really a tricky environment, and we will see more and more of those problems in, in the in the coming months. In that respect, yeah, Poland is a very interesting market. A, a, a lot of companies are having an eye on Poland and the Polish market. What would you say is for international uh, companies really important to understand what might be different compared to other markets uh, to understand from the Polish market? Well, I think at the end of the day, every market is specific because it's regulatory. Uh, so, so yeah. of course, you have to know your fellow and you have to understand the regulatory environment but but this is something where you just have to look a little bit on what is the outlook on the european level and at some moment or all the national markets will follow that's one thing on the other hand of course there's a lot of specific things in the planning law building law environmental law which are different in each each and every country generally the polish legal system is is based on on the let's say german law system of course it was adopted long time ago so there are there are there are differences but but generally if you know a little bit the german market and you have a certain idea about the, let's say administrative law civil law company law environment then you don't see too much differences between let's say the, the german legal environment and, and the polish legal environment of course the language is completely different and the devil is in the details but, but yeah. that's that's always the case do you have any examples of things that can, might go wrong from your one of your cases maybe uh, maybe an anonymous case but nevertheless an interesting lesson learned from from the practical side from your i think what many things where you see mistakes are done in the planning law environment that means that just to, to give you maybe a major example in poland in areas where you don't have have a master plan and generally PV is developed in, in areas where you don't have a master plan because to establish a master plan takes about two years or so, so it's too much time. You can develop your PV farm only on uh, grounds with bad soil. And so there's some protection to for, for the agricultural for good agricultural soil. And sometimes developers try to, to work around this, but not very successfully to, to get this planning permission on, on soils which are of good quality. And, and then of course, this can be challenged at higher administrative courts. And, and this is a little bit the typical mistakes um, a lot of developers make at the beginning. Yeah. Another thing which is a little bit challenging is environmental impact assessment. For the past, it was not really necessary, but right now you see that in more and more um, larger developments, you see the, the requirement to have an environmental impact assessment, including some bird nesting studies. This takes, of course, a little bit of time and, and people try to circumvent. And as well here, there's a risk that this can be challenged at a later moment. So th those are the typical, I think, uh, development um, mistakes you can make. The same is in, in, in all the countries which really don't know PV or let's say large scale utility scale PV for 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 a long time, there's always the problem around planning and environmental. Yep. And, and and this right now is getting tougher and tougher uh, in, uh, on the Polish market. Okay, final question from my side, uh, Christian. Uh, is there currently a trend going on in Poland which, uh, from which you are very uh, excited about? Well, as I already told you, we are, we are just waiting for the new legislation uh, on European level under the under the new European Green Deal, which will be most likely uh, available mid, mid of this year, the meaning meaning the, the new renewable energy directive and, and the new energy efficiency directive. And I think this will um, further shape the future of the Polish market. So in a certain way, only the sky is the limit. So, so PV is, is, a, is a late comer in Poland. But um, I think you see right now that, that the movement is really enormous and, and you see worldwide players being active on the Polish market. So everybody looks at the market right now. And this is, of course, a very excited environment. You can't be in a better position. So yeah. that's, that's great. Cool. Uh, with these positive words, I would like to thank you, Christian. And I look forward to meeting you in live in one of our upcoming events and hopefully very soon in the Polish conference. Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you, Evan. Thank you.